Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be going over a season 24.1, 21 update, going over all the tactical gear changes. Now I've already gone over the patch notes, reviewed that, the season pass, all that good stuff in previous videos. Today, we're going to show just a gameplay of each tactical gear item. We'll go over the pros and the cons of the items, how they've changed from the previous update and how I think they're going to really impact PUBG's gameplay going forward. Let's take a look. All right, and just as a reminder for those who haven't seen the patch notes video yet, when you start the game, everybody is going to start with a tactical gear carrier in your inventory. You have to manually open this up when you land on the ground and choose what tactical gear item you want to use. The key kicker there is that you have to stay with that tactical gear choice the entire game. You won't be able to swap to a different item. You cannot drop it. You can't loot someone else's. Whatever you choose in the beginning is what you're stuck with. So for this game, I think I'm going to start off with the blue chip detector. We'll go over some of the pros and cons, and then we'll jump to the next tactical gear. Now, this is test server, so a lot of bots. But what I would like to show you is why I think the blue chip detector is going to be one of the strongest and most powerful items. So let's act like this is a normal hot drop, right? You just landed, you get your gun. Maybe you get an armor, like a helmet or something before you actually use it. Here we go, get your little helmet. You got your vest and then boom. First thing you do is open up tactical gear. Boom, you get blue chip detector, confirm. Three seconds, boom, it's opened up. And now you have a blue chip detector in your number six slot. You pull it out and you can immediately see where everybody is within 50 meters radius. So 50 meters ahead of you and 50 meters behind you. Now in this particular instance, obviously it's a, a bot lobby on the test server. So no one else happened to land here, but you can just see how quickly you're able to get a gun, get looted up. Oh, look, here's a jammer backpack. Get a gun, get looted up and utilize the, uh, the blue chip detector to your advantage. I don't think it's working right now. Oh, no, I see that guy. Yeah, I can see that guy. Interesting. Okay, so so what we're finding out live here is that in the test server, they might have changed this and didn't update the patch notes. You can see blue chip detector sees the enemy and it doesn't see uh, my teammate, which is a good thing. Now, what will be interesting to see is after he we kill him. See, this guy has a... Uh, he doesn't have a blue chip. Where's his blue chip at? Oh, this is Vikendi. So there's no comeback arena. I mean, so there's no revive, just comeback arena this guy at a couple little points i gotta i gotta bring it right now uh, just to clear the air in that thing so with a blue chip detector it detects blue chips okay but ironically we're on vikendi so there are no blue chips because there's the comeback arena on vikendi so there's no revives but it does pick up the enemies uh while they're alive or knocked once they're dead it no longer picks them up what I actually need to go and test is go on Miramar where you do have an actual blue chip in your inventory and see if it still pings your friendlies blue chip because uh, it does that on the live server and it's a big problem. On the live server, after you kill even an enemy, if their blue chip is still in their box, if you go to the inventory and the blue chip is in their box, the detector will still pick up their ping. So. You might be like trying to figure out where the next enemies are and you're getting four different false pings of dead bodies around the map. So I just think the blue chip detector for me is the biggest potential gameplay changer in PUBG and not in a positive way. Again, we'll see really how it plays out when it goes to live server. But overall, I feel like this one specific item has the potential to really change change the way PUBG is played. Because you can imagine thinking to yourself, trying to tactically approach an enemy and always in the back of your mind going, do they have a blue chip detector? Do I have a jammer backpack? Do they already know where I'm rotating away to, to him? Or if you're in a squad, even if you have a jammer backpack, if one of your teammates doesn't have a jammer backpack, that enemy can pick up at least your teammate and then have a very good idea of where the rest of you guys are hidden, you know? So that's going to be a big thing, I think, for the tactical gears. So you can see the dead bodies still do ping with the blue chip. So I just took this guy's blue chip. I put it back on the ground right there. See if it ping. There it goes. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's 
That's actually a nerf to the blue chip detector. Apps that have the revive system, you're gonna ping enemy blue chips the entire time, even if it's a dead box. So the problem with that is obviously, you won't know for sure if you're looking at a, a live enemy or just a blue chip of a dead enemy. So that is definitely a big, big nerf to the blue chip detector. And then when you're on maps that don't have revive system like Vikendi and uh, Tego, on those maps, the blue chip detector will be actually stronger because it won't give you false pings about enemy blue chips. It'll only ping alive people, alive enemies, not friendlies, alive enemies. All right, so just to do a quick recap on the blue chip detector before we jump to the next item, everybody can start with the blue chip even right off the hot drop. It's able to detect enemies at a hundred meters uh, diameter. So 50 meters radius in every direction. Yeah, just overall, I think basically giving everybody in the game the opportunity to have a heartbeat sensor is very dangerous to the uh, integrity of the gameplay of PUBG because PUBG is not one of those run and gun shooters. It is more of a tactical, take your time, get a situational awareness of where the enemies are, what kind of terrain rotation you might want to make you know all those kind of things you really need to think about uh having everybody have the chance to immediately know where the enemy is is going to be very very tricky now obviously yes if you have a jammer backpack you negate the blue chip detector but that's a you know it's a random luck to find item and you know is that is that worth the sacrifice of not having a level three bag for all the extra utility you know i, I don't know so that's my initial thoughts on the blue chip detector. I think that one has the biggest probability to cause the most headaches in terms of the tactical gear, but we'll leave it at that for now until it goes live server. Let me know what you think about the blue chip detector and let's jump to the next tactical gear. All right, now next up, let's take a look at the tactical uh, backpack, which allows you to store two extra items in your inventory. Whereas before you could had, have up to four items. Now. Having extra guns isn't anything new, but previously, if you remember, the tactical backpack would actually sit here and it would take up one of your primary weapon slots. So you would have to forego a primary weapon just to be able to carry around this item. Now you no longer have to do that. You can actually have two primary weapons and two secondary weapons or you could even shove extra gear in those uh, slots. You could stack grenades in those slots. Like let's say you had multiple frag grenades or smokes you wanted to put. You could stack those items in there. So you see how that's sitting stacked up there? Let's see if I pull those out. I can put frag grenades and I can put what? Three, two or three frag grenades in there. So you're able to stack items. You can stack gear. If you wanted to have backup vests, backup helmets, Let's say you already had level three gear and you went to a loot drop. Boom, you can stash another set of level three gear into your loot drop. So you can really think about all those kind of possibilities um, that, that could happen. Look, here's my, here's my frag grenades. I'm gonna stash those in there. So it's two, two frag grenades in each slot. So you can have four extra frag grenades. I mean, it can get out of hand pretty quick for sure. And then also the other part is you know, being able to whiff all your shots like that, but also have every weapon that you want at your disposal, essentially. So boom, deal with that guy, right? Let's say I want to put shotgun for close range and I want the barrel for my long range or my mid range rather. So now I got my car 98 for long range. Oh, is that a person? Okay. I thought that was a person. Got my car 98 for long range. See if I can actually use this weapon properly. Ah, oh, got him. All right, so car 98 for long range. And then I just heard shots behind me, right? Mid range. So boom, I swapped to my AR. I'm looking for this guy. He's actually a little further away than I thought, but you get the idea. Boom, I get him with the, uh, with the barrel. Swap back to the car 98. You get a bot. Boom, he's dead. And then all of a sudden you hear somebody super close. And then out of nowhere, you pull up the pumper load a couple shells in this thing, and then boom, boom, they're dealt with, right? So very versatile. This is gonna be a very strong item. I, I will have to admit that. Heard someone close. Might be a real player. Yeah. Oh, 
what this bot kills me you see what i'm talking about look at that he didn't know i had a shotgun well he probably did actually not have a shotgun but you you get what i'm saying chat you get what i'm saying the versatility is actually really strong <clears throat> i think it makes for fun uses of the tactical backpack but what i'm simply trying to point out here are the the potential holes in the in the item you know where it can be kind of memed and taken advantage of maybe um again panzer faust are going to be you know a a more rare spawn item on most maps on vikendi there's a lot of them so you can imagine a lot of people having panzers on vikendi but it's a rare spawn item and so you're not always going to run into it but you know if a lot of people choose to get the tactical gear you could see where they could all have um one panzerfaust hiding in wait you know um again i'm not saying that needs to be nerfed necessarily but if PUBG did want to nerf that i think a very simple nerf to that would be that you either have um one extra weapon in here or two slots for like gear throwables that kind of thing like so if you went and put you know an actual gun down here if you drug a gun it would take up both spots so that you could only have a panzer or a shotgun or whatever but if you wanted to have like whatever grenades or extra armor helmet then it would just take up one of the two slots that could be a potential nerf to that if it was deemed that a nerf was needed uh or you can make it where it doesn't carry guns at all you know it's it's only for gear like uh you know extra armor extra grenades throwables uh whatever you know that kind of stuff so i think I don't think tactical backpack is going to be an actual overpowered item, but I do hope this um, kind of highlights how strong it actually could be when used uh, when used correctly. All right, so I hope that highlights some of the need to know features of the new tactical backpack changes. And again, I do think that's going to be a very strong item. I don't think it's going to be overpowered, but you could see in a few key scenarios how it could be very, very strong if people were able to have pretty much any weapon they wanted to at their disposal at any given time. You know, you could have your sniper, your AR, and your shotgun. You could have your DMR, your SMG, and your Panzerfaust. You, you kind of get, get where I'm going with that. So let me know what you guys think below about the tactical backpack specifically, and let's move on to the next tactical gear item. All right, next up, let's take a look at the EMT gear, which did receive quite literally the biggest nerf out of all of the items in the tactical gear rotation. If you uh, don't remember, the EMT gear used to be a very, very strong item that you could heal yourself or your teammates in three seconds with a first aid or med kit and get full HP. You could also, while holding the EMT, bandage up to 100, which usually you can only bandage up to 75 HP. Now, the EMT can no longer be used on yourself. The only benefit you get for EMT gear on yourself is if you uh emt is if you use boost and the boost will apparently give you more boost but that is the only benefit that you'll get for yourself the main thing that the emt gear is going to be used for now is to really be a teammate item to run around and heal your teammates uh faster than normal but it will still won't be the old three seconds so the timers that have been changed for emt are now going to be a med kit usage is going to take seven seconds as opposed to the standard 10 seconds. A first aid is going to take five seconds as opposed to what it was before is three seconds before the nerf. So that's a big, big change going from three seconds to five. It may not sound like a lot, but that extra two seconds can mean uh, a world of a difference in terms of getting pushed for a fight. All right. Now that I got some damage done to myself from that grenade, if I go to use the first aid or the bandage, you'll see that it's the same time as it would if as it would be if I didn't even have the EMT gear. So look, takes six seconds still for a first aid, and the bandage takes four seconds. Now, what is changed is the boost. So the boost takes the same amount of time, but it's supposed to give me more boost percentage. Let's see. I use two of them here. Does that give me the full? Yeah, that does. So usually an energy drink would take three energy drinks to give you full boost with the emt gear it's only uh two energy drinks and you get the full boost now is that is that really worth it no not in a solo gameplay 
Let me see if I can uh, bandage up to full with it at least. No, you can't even bandage up to full. Wow. Yeah, it, the EMT is a big, big nerf. Because even if you could at least bandage yourself up to full HP, even that would be really strong. But boy, that's that's tough. So now the only thing it's really used for is to heal your teammates. And it's not even as good as it used to be before because you know, you're not healing them at three second intervals. You're taking five seconds for a first aid, seven seconds for a med kit. So just to sum up the EMT gear here, this is no longer going to be an item you ever want to select as a solo player. I would say even as a duo player, it'd be very questionable because the healing benefit is not that great anymore. It's it's not, honestly, it's not that good. Uh, I mean, you save what, two seconds from a first aid, three seconds from a med kit. Yeah, I, I guess that would come in handy in certain situations, but it's not like, um, you know, it's not like the previous one was three seconds to res. Okay, and then I'm gonna heal him real quick. It still is the full re revive time. Okay, it's a little slower to revive. It says seven seconds as opposed to 10. And then five seconds for a first. Oh, man. That's tough, dude. Yeah, that just doesn't make any sense. Hey, thanks for being a good sport. It just doesn't make any sense to, to pick it up. I mean, I understand why they nerfed it. The item did need a nerf, but uh, yeah, so you can't quick res your teammate in three seconds. You can't um, quick heal them in three seconds. So like that whole in the middle of a... Of a gunfight situation you're not going to get that big of a benefit out of it um now for those teammates who still want to be the medic class obviously that's the that's the best bet because you can you know heal your teammates a little bit quicker but you know the argument could be made if you wanted to be the medic uh team member why not just carry a tactical pack and have a bunch more first aids and med kits or boosts stuffed in your tactical pack so so that's it for the EMT gear. Uh, let me know your comments below on that one and let's jump to the next tactical gear. All right, now let's take a look at the spotter scope, which did receive a very nice buff for the tactical gear change. The spotter scope is actually really close to how it used to be when it was first introduced. When everyone said it was too overpowered, it's kind of gone back to that now with, with a slight nerf uh, to what it originally was. Now I'm on test server, so I don't have any teammates to actually work with and, and utilize the scope with, but I'll, I'll show you exactly how it works and then maybe explain some good scenarios uh, where it can still be very, very, very strong. Let's go ahead and land here. I'm even gonna get a gun and go boom, spotter scope, confirm. I can get it real quick. Boom, get it out and then scan this guy. Boom, so now you got a live ping. See that for seven seconds, a live ping for seven seconds on these enemies. So you can do multiple enemies and it stays on there for seven seconds. You can also zoom from four to eight magnification now. And that actually goes really far too. That actually went really far. How far away is that guy? Oh my goodness. That was a very far zoom. Let's see if we can get us a helmet so we don't get one shot again here. Spider scope is really going to be honestly a pretty cheeky item. So yet you're on you're on a team with a couple of really good snipers, or or maybe you guys are getting ready to push a compound, and you got a team that you're trying to scan. If you scan anyone in the uh, in the screen, so let me see if I can give an example here. You can basically scan multiple people. See, so yeah, boom, I got him scanned. If there is multiple teammates there, it would scan all of them at one time as long as they're in the screen. Now let me see if I put them on the edge, if it still scans them. It does look, but it is only white. It's red when I highlight them. You see that? So watch this. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna let it seven seconds, which seven seconds is a long time for it to go behind buildings and everything. So it tracks them for seven. So if I do this, I have to hold left click. Oh, it didn't actually get them. Let's try again. Hold left click. You see, it's just white. It doesn't go red and follow them until I put the cursor over them. Let's see if we can get this guy. Boom. But this guy uh, doesn't quite pick him up. Interesting. I don't know how far away that guy is. Let's see. There's the ping. About what? 800 meters? 700 meters there? So it wouldn't pick him up at 700 meters. So boom. He's pinged. And for seven seconds, we'll know exactly where that guy is. So this could be a very, very strong item still because all you have to do is boom, do that. And then you yourself can get your gun out and you can get back into the fight with your team. 
And so having that seven seconds of ping, and there's essentially no cooldown on it. Like you could, you know, you could ping this guy, boom, and then turn around, boom, and then ping this guy, and then turn around. It could be a team, oh, we're getting shot in the back. Boom, ping that team. And they're all marked, you know, for seven, seven seconds uh, from the time that you originally mark them. So that's very, very strong. Boom. You can kind of pre-aim your shot too. Look at that. Boom. Because you know exactly where he's going to be. As honestly, that's really strong. That's actually really strong. I, I didn't used to think the spot scope was that great because of the big nerf, but this change they did makes it very viable, to be honest. Maybe not so much in solos. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't go quite 700 meters or so, but I mean this guy obviously is going to get him. Maybe not quite in solos, but duos and squads for sure. This is definitely a strong item. And I wonder can I reset it if I reping him before 7 seconds? I wonder if he just stays stays marked the whole time. Yeah, it looks like it. So every time you do that, you reset it. So you can have him a, a live active ping for essentially eternity, as long as they're always um, scannable before the seven seconds is up. Now, if they're not in that little box, if they're outside of it, you see it has white triangles. But if I just hover over them, it automatically turns those white triangles red. And that's when they stay pinged for seven seconds where you can track them through objects. So yeah, that's honestly, that's pretty damn strong. Like that's what it was before they nerfed it. And it was, uh, it was really tough because you can imagine a scenario where the enemy is in a building peeking windows and you tag him one time. And for the next seven seconds, if he's trying to get cheeky and you know, maybe go from this window to this window without you knowing you already know where he's running or your teammate already knows where he's going to be running to move to. So that's going to be a very strong item. The kicker with this item is that um, the enemy does not know when they've been tagged. So the enemy has no indication visually or audio that they've been marked and they're live ping. So you know, they could be thinking, oh, I'm going to get a better angle real quick. And for, they don't know how long the seven seconds is going to last if they've already been marked or whatever. So this is a very, very strong item. Honestly, this was slept on. Uh, I slept on it until I just got my, you know, got my hands on and actually got to use it. And uh, yeah, you can imagine in a real game how this is going to be very strong being able to mark essentially an unlimited amount of people, whoever's in the field of view of your screen. And then once they're red triangle, your teammate sees them sees the red triangle for seven seconds that's going to be really really strong will it be stronger than like the blue chip detector the tack pack i don't think so but in the right hands of the right team comp yeah that's going to be a tough one to deal with because remember with the spotter scope it can also see uh through smokes and through trees so like if you have a lot of foliage like think like Sandhawk, for instance, where there's a lot of bushes and trees. Whoever has a spotter scope can literally just spam scan it because there's no cooldown. You could spam scan it and just wait till something gets picked up and then boom, your, your teammates know exactly where it is. And if they try to run behind, you know, cover or a smoke grenade or anything like they're going to get found. So that's really, really strong. Yeah, it looks like the max distance is 600 meters. I just tagged this guy at 600 meters. So that looks to be about the maximum distance, which is that's a lot, a lot of distance. So, so there you go. That's a spotter scope. Let me know what you think about that one down below. Let's jump to the next tactical gear. All right, next up, let's take a look at the tactical drone, which did receive a slight nerf with the tactical gear changes. It can no longer go uh, 300 meters away. The max distance is 200 meters away. What I'm curious to see is if it still has that annoying beeping noise when you get to like less than 90 meters. So let's tech, uh, check it out. I'm just gonna try to be a little cheeky and land on like one of these rooftops or something. Go oh, right up here. We're on test server, so it should be just a lot of bots up here. Hopefully they don't beam me. All right, let me go prone, boom, drone, tablet. Get them going. Boom, okay, I'm go prone. Can I go prone? I'm prone, I'm droned up, and boom. See, it says max distance 200 meters at the bottom, and there's an enemy. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hidden, right? <laughs> pretty hidden. So let's go see if it starts beeping annoyingly at 90 meters. Oh, good. It doesn't. Good. That's a very good change because it was annoying. Uh, now it starts beeping at 50, 60 meters. 
I wish they had take that away, honestly. That's very annoying. But so yeah, so the drone is pretty much, you know, unchanged besides the meter reduction, how far away you can fly with it. That is a, honestly, that's a big nerf because it makes it really only like a small little compound usage or maybe, you know, fly high to get a bird's eye view kind of thing. And uh, you can't go too, too far with it, you know? And the drone historically was really only used on, uh, on Destin because of the little secret rooms and stuff. But as you can see what I'm doing, it could be a very cheeky way way um to get yourself some loot and some weaponry early on if you find yourself you know stuck in a, in a sticky situation or even bring uh loot and items to your teammates that's also a possibility the one thing i'll say about the drone is that it's very easy to shoot down it is one shot it doesn't actually have like you know an hp bar or anything so if an enemy shoots it once it's dead you can go and save it but you have to physically go and pick up the drone to repair it so i'll see if i can show you guys here and i just go over here and oh I can't grab these items. Oh, that's interesting. This is not, it makes them not lootable now. Okay. Oh, look at that. I literally can't get like, they're stuck in there. All right. Uh, plan B. So one cheeky thing about the drones that some people just don't remember is that you can recall the drone to yourself. So you can like keep it flying up in the sky if you want and just save it for later. So let's say, boom, the drone's up there and I'm just chilling. Yeah. I can't believe you can't get that. So I'm just chilling. The drone's up there flying. Where's it at? Where the hell is my, where's my drone? There it is. So way up there. And if I want to get a another bird's eye view before I take a shot, boom, just hop back in the drone. It's still there. Or I can call it back to me by right clicking with the drone tablet uh, in my hand. So I hit right click drone call initiated and it'll literally come right to you. Whatever item is inside of the drone will automatically go to your persons. So boom, now I got it. And now I got the vest because I recalled the drone uh, to me. So let's do the same thing. The drone back out in the air. There should be another gun, right? Look, here we go. Grab this little mutant. Actually, let me get the helmet first, huh? Boom, recall drone. And you can just keep looting, do whatever you want to do if you want, because it would just find its way to you. Uh, the drone can get stuck, though, like on little walls or something, but you get the point. All right, so we got the helmet. Now I'm going to pick up a little mutant. Recall the drone. Recall initiated. Fun fact, you can actually have the drone... You can actually have the drone follow you in a car, too. You just can't go too fast, because if you go too fast and you get too far away from the drone, uh, it'll stop... Bruh, you can't make this shit up. I just got hit by a red zone on the goddamn roof of this water tower. PUBG, I'm trying to record stuff for your update. What the heck? Anyways, you get the idea. The drone is pretty much the same item, just slightly nerfed with how far it can go in its range. Is the drone still going to be a good to pick up item? Yes. Yes. The drone is actually very, very good because uh, on Destin specifically, you can get into the secret areas, the secret drone rooms, but on any map, it's a good cheeky item to grab specific uh, gear that you may want or need without going out and exposing yourself. So you could be in a building prone and then fly your drone around and go to get whatever, some level three vest or a helmet that you might see on a rooftop or a, a sniper you see on a, whatever, you know, you could, you could picture how you could use that. And you can also bring your teammates items, which can be very useful uh, in sticky situations. And considering you never have to uh, sacrifice a primary weapon to have that drone capability is very, very good. Again, the one downside of the drone is that if it gets shot, it's going to fall down uh, vertically. It falls straight down. Wherever it lands, you physically have to go to it and pick it up to repair it. So if it's over a mountain or over a building and it gets shot and it lands on the roof, if you don't have access to that building, you can't get your drone back. So just keep that in mind. All right, let me know in the comments what you think about the drone change and let's jump to the next tactical gear. All right, last but certainly not least is going to be the uh, armor repair kit, or I guess that's the all-in-one repair kit that they've changed it to now. This, I think, is going to be the strongest item in the game, and I'll explain why here in just a second. The all-in-one repair kit combines armor repair kit and the helmet repair kit from Vikendi, which allows you to repair your own armor and helmet up to full uh, full armor durability in what, I think it's eight seconds or six seconds or something like that. I think it's six seconds. But now you can also repair a teammate's armor or helmet within the six second time frame or you can repair items that are on the ground. So you can see a lot of different scenarios where that would be very useful. Now you do only get 10 total uses out of the repair kit for the duration of the game. So once you 
select the repair kit once you and then once you use it 10 times it's done for the rest of the game so let's go all in one repair kit confirm boom let's get this guy out so you can see here's the all in repair kit down here and it says 10 and it also says 10 right over here where my mouse is kind of hiding uh, down there it shows you how many repairs you have so again it can repair helmets and vests not only what's on your person but if this thing was damaged i could repair it on the ground for my teammate to pick up and i can repair it apparently i haven't tested this one but that's what the patch note says on a teammate's body so i can literally walk up to my teammate and uh you know do the action button and repair my teammate's armor in addition to the armor and the helmet repair uh, capability, the all-in-one repair kit will now repair vehicles as well. So when you have a damaged vehicle, you can repair it up to 500 durability per use. So if you have, uh, say, a BRDM and it gets chunked down, you can repair it up to 500 HP every time you use the item. And again, you can use it 10 total times. Now, what's also been added to vehicles for the repair kit is the capability to install or remove tires. Now, this is the one that's going to be kind of interesting to me. Only the person with the repair kit can remove tires from a vehicle. I'm just going to go grab a helmet in this building so I don't get one shot by a bot or something real quick, and I'll go show you. But you can still remove tires or replace tires from vehicles because that does not require a usage out of the kit so here we got a couple of vehicles i'll go and uh give you a little demonstration here now why i think this item is going to be potentially the strongest item of all the tactical gear is is simply because you're going to be able to keep level three gear replenished essentially the entire duration of the game so if you never use this to repair vehicles, if you just solely use it to repair armor, you could repair your own helmet and your own vest five times each. Or if you're playing a team game, you could repair yours, your teammates, all 10 total times. And if they happen to have their repair kit, they could also be repairing uh, your armor and helmet. And if you remember, so now I'm removing the tire. Uh, if you remember, the tire is in my, my number four slot now. And I can also move the tire to my inventory here or I can put it on the ground. And that tire weighs 20 capacity. So it's actually pretty heavy. So if you had a butt pan here, the tire would go here or it would just go to the ground if you didn't have any inventory space. Now back about the back to the armor thing. If you remember when your vest uh, takes all of its damage, the vest gets broken, but it stays on your body. So you can always, always, always repair a level three vest even if it's full cracked the helmet however once that goes to zero durability it will pop off of your head you cannot repair it so as long as you remember that and you remember to uh simply repair the helmet before it gets down to zero you can keep the helmet fresh forever and if you know anything about level three gear in PUBG, you know how strong it is especially because a level three helmet can withstand a bolt action sniper rifle and keep you alive. So having that ability, essentially the entire game is going to be incredibly, incredibly strong. Okay. Now going back to the vehicle portion of it, what I don't like about this whole tire situation is that you cannot repair tires, even if they're slightly damaged or fully popped, you can't repair them. So you can only take off tires and then put them back on. And I'll show you here. I'm going to take off the buggy tire and then I'll walk over here and I got, you have to actually hold the tire. So I'll pull the tire out and then install tire. It's three seconds and boom, tires back on. Now you might be asking, well, see them. Why the hell would I do that? Why would I not just take that vehicle? You know, I guess if you had this situation where it was a buggy and you, your squad wanted to keep the truck, you're just going to, you know, take the tire and get the truck. But in most scenarios, I don't see people taking the time to go run to another vehicle, take off the tires of that vehicle, run back over or drive the vehicle over, whatever, swap all the tires and go. They're just going to take the different vehicle and go, right? The other thing is that like, how practical of a scenario is this really? And I'll, I'll show you what, what I mean by that. I like how you can actually put the tires in the trunk though. That is kind of funny. So you could stash them all in there, which is kind of kind of cheeky. Uh, so let's see, you pick the tires up. All right, oh, not the gas can, tire. Um, also, if you're wondering, you cannot throw the tire and do, do damage to anybody. Oops, let me do that. So here's an example. And I don't know, I don't think this, has, this is ever gonna work, but let's do an example, okay? You and your team are in this car. You're all four in this car. All right, 
you want to get to that compound that's right over there dead ahead there's a team on the hill that's shooting at you but you want to save your vehicle's tires so you guys crash into the compound and you jump in and you barely make it right unscathed if that team starts shooting your tires it's done those tires are already popped you cannot save them so you would have to crash your vehicle pull out your your kit remove each tire which is three seconds per tire so it's going to take you about 15 seconds between moving around to each tire to get all of them right so boom you're getting shot at or you're potentially going to get shot at during this whole process i'm almost going to get shot my head's about to get blown off head's about to get blown off <laughs> so boom now you got all the tires now you could you know stash them in the trunk or you know leave them in a building or whatever and now your vehicle is safe because if someone shoots at your vehicle and they damage your vehicle no worries because once the fight's over you can just go ahead and repair the vehicle get it back to full and then put the tires back on but you can see how like how long of a process that could take and uh also to be clear anybody can put tires back on not just the person with this with this kit anybody can pick up the tire and and put them on only the person with the kit can take off tires okay and that uh operation is interruptible so it, it says specifically here the removal or installation process can be canceled under the following circumstances if a vehicle is driven during the process so if the vehicle moves at all it's canceled if the vehicle is crashed into something it's canceled or if a vehicle crashes into it if another tire on the vehicle during the tire removal receives damage so that means let's say you pull to this compound all right and you're trying to get at least one of these tires off to save one or two of them in the process of you removing this tire if another tire takes damage it's canceled the whole process is canceled so you can see how like not usable this feature is going to be for a lot of scenarios hope that quick demonstration uh, shows you what the tire removal installation feature is all about and how that can be used um, or not used in certain scenarios is it a cool feature to be able to do that yes yeah for sure it is um should you just be able to repair all the tires though when you use the repair kit on the vehicle yes i feel like as long as the vehicle is not completely destroyed you should be able to repair the vehicle and it would just automatically put all four tires back on the car at 100 health even if they're popped off i think that's the best thing because most people aren't gonna not take a vehicle because it's low health most people are not going to take a vehicle because it's missing tires right so i feel like that's kind of a missed opportunity here for the tire or the vehicle repair thing where it will be very strong is using it for gliders and for brdms because 10 uses is going to be a ton of hp uh, that's 500 hp per use so it's potentially 5,000 hp that you could be um buffing you know re-enabling on your vehicles and so obviously with a glider that can last a long time pretty much the whole match a brdm that can last a long time so that'll be a cheeky item to have for those scenarios but what i think this kit is going to be the most used and the most known for is the helmet in the armor repair feature specifically level three gear and especially getting into late game phases because we've all been there a late game fight breaks out you lose a helmet or you your vest is cracked you're not able to get to any other loot you know until the next fight happens and so you're really anxious and ner nervous about oh i can't take this fight i got to be careful because my, my vest is cracked i'll be killed quick or my helmet's about to pop off so imagine being able to just constantly replenish that throughout the whole late game phase that's going to be a very 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 strong item oh, look, look here we go look can i repair them uh here or do I have to like take them out? So I'm gonna put that on the ground. Okay. And then boom. All right. I'm gonna swap it. Okay. Here. Now the vest is on the ground. Repair vest. <laughs> Look at that. Hold a pair of dikes and repair your vest. Okay. Got it. So now 100 HP on the, on the vest. Very good. And that used obviously one repair and then also, you know, doing the vehicles use one repair. So that's how you can repair items um, on the ground and it says that you can do it you know on your teammates as well so if your teammate is uh just standing there you can walk up to them and repair their armor and repair their helmet without it even being on the ground and of course you can do your own so yeah um of all the tactical gear again i feel like the all-in-one repair kit is going to be the the strongest and not for the vehicle portion of it the vehicle portion i think is neither here nor there 
um it'll be useful in a couple of very very specific scenarios uh you know a brdm a glider maybe a, a normal vehicle too every once in a while but it that definitely won't be it's a bread and butter um the main thing will be for repairing armor helmets especially late game it's like boom you got that got that vest wait do you have to drop your own vest to repair it with the uh, other kit you could just like here you go to your inventory and you hit, you hit go oh that's interesting do you actually have to drop it to repair it <laughs> yeah it looks like you do wow okay that's actually a nerf to the item that's a big nerf to the item so you have to actually drop your your helmet or your armor to repair it i'm glad we tested it out all right so that's actually that's actually a nerf to the item uh in a good way though because it's very very strong being able to just repair your gear like the old one like i said you could actually do it while you were wearing the gear you could literally just go to your inventory click on helmet repair kit start it and boom it would repair it but now it looks like you actually have to take off the helmet or take off the vest to repair it which is gonna put you into a vulnerable um scenario so i think that's a good change now what's getting interesting here is these late game scenarios right so there's two other people alive and this is a test server it could be bots i don't know but two other people alive what gear tactical gear would you would you want in a late game scenario at this point would you prioritize armor helmet repair would you prioritize a drone perhaps you know still having your two primary weapons or a drone in the air and find the last two enemies that could be very strong um assuming they don't shoot it down quickly the blue chip detector being able to at a 50 meter radius ping the enemies and sneak up on them very strong if they have a jammer backpack though um you won't be able to see them that that's the counter to the uh bluetooth detectors they have a jammer backpack uh the emt gear being able to uh, heal your teammates a little faster but not yourself so in a solo pointless what's the other one a spotter scope could be could be very strong again in a solo experience probably not that's more of a, of a squad duo based item i think um, or the tactical backpack, being able to have multiple, you know, two extra items in your backpack at all times. I'm not honestly too sure what I would want. It's a, it's a very, very interesting dilemma, which is kind of fun to think about, right? Like it's, it's potentially, potentially a lot of ways to approach the situation. Like now that I have level three gear in my head, I'm thinking, oh, I'm glad I have the tactical uh, repair kit because now if I get headshot or something, Boom, I'm repairing my, my armor or repairing my vest or my, my helmet rather, you know. I'm assuming one of these guys is in this building and I'm good to go. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. If you have a tactical backpack, you know, maybe you, you saved up a shotgun for late game. Maybe you saved up an extra helmet or an extra vest for late game. It's a lot of different ways to approach that, that scenario, which is which I think is a good thing. Having to make that choice and and have it have a direct effect on your gameplay throughout that match is an interesting um proposition what's also interesting to note is that you could potentially never have selected a tactical gear up until the later phases of the game so you could get to like phase five and be like you know what right now i think i would really love to have a blue chip detector or i would really love to have a drone or whatever and you can elect to have that item late game and not use anything in the early game that that's also a good strat you know interesting like right now on a solo you know i'm kind of thinking a drone would be really good especially on miramar right like you know this circle is ending in what appears to be a big field so a blue chip detector would help it would but you got to be really close to the enemies to use the blue chip now a drone though you know you could potentially be in a in a prone safe location just fly that sucker around until you find the enemies you know Kind of got me thinking now, to be honest. Now. Okay, so that's a bot. Oh my god, that bot's beaming me, though. I want to know where the last real player is. Blue chip recall system de blocked, deactivated, blocked. There you go. Little bump, bump, bump. Oh, it's another bot. Oh, they're in the same team. I forgot we're playing squads. I honestly, I'm surprised you can't repair this sucker on your persons. Um, and you have to crouch to repair it too. I just noticed that. So boom, that guy shot me. I'm going to go ahead and boom, get that. He revived his teammate. Oh no, he didn't revive his, you revive your teammate, bot. What are you doing, silly? 
um p90 see if i had a tactical backpack boom i could throw extra helmet extra vest um up in there where i could throw the p90 and the helmet up in there interesting interesting let's finish this game up shall we hey buckaroo you don't have no guns i wonder if you'll pick up a gun if i drop it from oh my god he just punched me he's a fucking madman bro oh my god he's dude I was like, he just started just wailing on me dude i dropped the gun for it. do you want it what if i can i repair his helmet don't kill me hold on stop that stop that dude stop that can i repair this guy's uh helmet because i'm pretty sure i hit him in the head I can carry him, but it doesn't say to repair anything. Dang. Okay. Uh, run away, sucker. All right. Got him. Yeah. So, um, man, I got to be honest. After getting myself into an in-game scenario, obviously it's it's a you know test server bot scenario. It does kind of make you start to think, which item would you want to carry? It's not as easy of an answer as I would have thought I would have been able to say. If you just asked me, Sidon, what's the item you want? I'm like, oh, I want the blue chip detector. No question. But now I'm kind of like, I don't know. Is that, it's kind of situational, isn't it? Depending if you're solo duo squad, what map you're on, where the circle might potentially be ending or starting. It has a lot of variation, which I think is a good thing. So let, I don't know this video is probably pretty long, but let, let's wrap it up like this. Um, overall, I think the changes to tactical gear are very good. It needed a, a revamp, a refresh, and I think being able to not take up a weapon slot is very, very good. A lot of the tactical gear got nerfed in a good way, I think, because it, a lot of it was really strong before, and if you didn't have to sacrifice a weapon, it'd be really, really strong now. Am I sure this is the best route for PUBG? I, the jury's still not out. This jury, is, jury is, is it still out or still not out? They're still gone. They haven't answered. The jury is not answering. They're AFK right now. And I think it's just going to take some actual play time on it on the live server with real people so that we can really experience it. My knee jerk reaction is honestly mostly positive with the exception of the blue chip detector. And I'm going to keep going back to that because having everybody having the potential to have a heartbeat sensor is very dangerous, I think, uh, in terms of just the integrity to how you approach uh, the gunfights and the gameplay in PUBG. However, I will put an asterisk on that. On the maps with a uh, revive system, we've seen that even the dead bodies still ping on the blue chip detector because they have a blue chip in their lootable box that pings. That's a big nerf to the blue chip because it'll confuse the heck out of you thinking you got multiple pings when it could be a bunch of dead people. So you don't really know who's who. On top of that, the jammer backpack negates it if and when you find a jammer backpack. And on the uh, on the maps that have comeback arena, so Tego and Vikindi, the blue chip detector is stronger on those maps because you're not gonna get false pings because the blue chips aren't on the person's body. So they're never, you know, if it pings, it's a real person, it's an enemy, you know? So let me know what you guys think about all of the tactical gear changes down below. Obviously, give me your raw thoughts and opinions because none of us have played it. But keep in mind, you know, this is, it's an iteration. It's a change. Uh, it doesn't mean this is how it's going to be forever. It doesn't mean PUBG's married to this new gameplay concept. I'm sure they're listening to our feedback. I would urge that you leave feedback here, of course, in this video, but also do like PUBG forms, the official PUBG forms, the PUBG Discord, or even just on Twitter, like when PUBG US or PUBG Main tweets out the updates, you know, given feedback there, I'm sure somebody's reading it, you know, I don't know where it goes, but I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if Dave Kurt and them did a, an AMA for Reddit pretty soon, cause this is a big change. So I'll say, I'll, I'd say, let's be on the lookout for that, but let's wrap this long. I'm sure it's like almost freaking 45 minute long video. Wrap it up with that. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, uh, like the video, get subscribed for more PUBG content, share it with buddies who might be new to PUBG and don't know about the dome. We'd love to have them here. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.